and we are in line five. Oh God, you know my foolishness, and my sins are not hidden from you. Let not those who wait for you, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded because of me, O God of Israel, because for your sake I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers and an alien to my mother's children. Because zeal for your house has eaten me up and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that became my reproach. I also made sackcloth my garment. I became a byword to them. Those who sit in the gate speak against me, and I am the song of the drunkards. So here we are. Uh, David is pouring out his heart um, to God. And so, and he's saying a lot in this lengthy stanza. And so in line five, he's saying, Oh God, you know my foolishness. And my sins are not hidden from you. And so what he's saying is that, you know, when he's sinning, uh, nothing is hidden from God. God knows everything about us. And so we don't, we can't hide anything from him. And we read in Hebrews before how everything is, is butt naked or when they say butt naked, but naked and open um, before God. So that means that we can't hide anything uh, from our father. And so he's saying that he knows his foolishness, you know, when things, times when he weren't being wise. And he also know that his sins, uh, that, that God knows his sins are not hidden from him. In line six, he's saying, let not those who wait for you, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. And so he's saying, let, let not those who wait in faith for you, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed or be dishonored because of me. And sometimes whenever uh, we are in leadership or we have that, that, uh, that symbol of authority or if we have... Um, or we are in authority in a position of authority, then the things that we do and say could hinder someone else. And he's, he doesn't want that to happen to those he are um, in, a, in authority of. And so he said, let not those who wait for you, O Lord, of, o Lord God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Oh, and then it says, let not those who seek you be confounded or confused because of me, O God of Israel. Line seven, because for your sake I have borne reproach. And remember that reproach is, uh, is something imputed to the discredit of others. All right, so he said, um, because, because for your sake I have borne reproach. And so, and this refers us to uh, Romans 15, 3. Romans 15, 3, that says, For even Christ did not please himself, but as it was written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. All right, and so we're going to, you know, cover uh, what we're reading now, Psalm 69, 7, that referred us here, and then also that's going to be for also Psalm um, 69, 9, line 9, and line 20 as well. All right, so but we're not going to come back to this, but just know that this is, you know, for those three lines, for um, 7, 9, and 20. Now, also, uh, this is part of a fulfillment scripture a prophetic scripture right here um, mark 15 29 that says and those who passed by blasphemed him wagging their heads and saying 
aha, uh -huh. and the uh, aha uh -huh is like a, a, a scornful uh, phrase. You who destroy the temple and build it in three days. All right. And so, and that refers us to back to 69, 7. So be, because for your sake, I have borne reproach. And that, that was uh, for that one. Shame has covered my face. Now, remember what Jesus had said, that whatever Jesus had done on the cross, it was to take care of our shame. And so we don't have to be ashamed. Jesus bore our shame. He bore our guilt. He bore everything on that cross. And so we don't have to um, be ashamed for anything. All right. And so we're going to pause here and then we'll pick it up in line eight.